four people travelled from one end of the continent to the other on big orange planes for 50 quid, it was all done by train. And actually recently people rediscovered that because of the Iceland volcano. They were stranded in on the Med or in Eastern Europe and came back by train. And a lot of people came back and said, you know what, this isn't that bad. So I'm travelling 2,000 kilometres from London to Istanbul by train. The first stop is Paris. We've got three hours to kill in between trains before we get on the train to Munich, so I've come here to Chartier, which is my favourite restaurant in Paris. It's an old 19th century eating hall. It's not bad at all, it's about 10 euros to eat and have a beer. And also they're brilliantly rude in here. I once came in during the day when there was very few people in here. They made me sit in a far corner on my own rather than wherever I wanted just because they had to fill it up from the back. So it's quite a nice way of getting straight into, into Paris and uh, certain Parisian traditional customs. Where are you guys from? Munich. Ah, right, cool. And you? London. London? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Last time we had some, a little Chinese guy who was playing all night long his Chinese ding 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 music. It was a bit uh, strange, but okay. It's quite funny being bunged into a cabin with strangers like that, and that's kind of what it's all about, really. So I've never seen six people in a, in a cabin like that on a train. I've seen four before, but not six. People use the train for a variety of different reasons. The lady in the buffet car was saying she absolutely does it for environmental reasons, which I can totally understand. Other people do it because they're scared of flying. But actually, a lot of people do it because of the experience. And it sounds cheesy, but being able to watch the country go past you as you're travelling is something quite unique. I have one special thing for you, maybe you could film it. Okay. On this uh, little river, yeah. Yeah, there's a, sm a small wave in the river, but it stays there all the time. And the people surfing there under a bridge. So if we go there tomorrow morning, there'll be people surfing on the wave? Definitely. Really? they also surfing in at bad weather. Really? Really, really. It's nice, great, we've got a tip of something to do tomorrow morning when we get into Munich. So we'll go to this little ice spring he was talking about where they surf under a bridge, I think so. Yeah, it's a good idea. Feels a bit like we left, we left Paris in the summer and arrived in Munich in the autumn. The tributaries that run through that park apparently is at the foot of one of those where there must be some kind of conflagration of water that makes the current act like that and apparently you'll find people surfing on it 24 hours a day sometimes, even in the middle of the winter. We wandered around a bit and we found it, this is the ice bath, where a tributary of the Isa River runs under this bridge and kinks up over a ridge of concrete under the water and creates a perfect wave. And there's people here all year round surfing it, about 10 minutes from the centre of the city. People probably started surfing it like 30 years ago. 30 years ago? Yeah. Right. And then, but then it was different. They didn't, they didn't have the woods on the side and it was, it was a mess and people were surfing on the string, like more than water skiing. Basically, I've only been doing it for like two or three years because I always thought it was stupid to do it. Then I had my English friends come over and go, this is amazing, we have to come here to surf. So that's how I started. It's, it's like through friends who came from other cities who got me excited about it. And to have something like this in the middle of the city is quite... It's quite amazing. Good. Yeah. Nowhere else in the world you get something like this. It's like a, a running machine for surfers, where they're literally surfing on the spot. You can't normally get this close to surfers because they're out at sea. Being able to see it up close, and seeing the surge of water from underneath them, I think it's, it's quite powerful. So I've covered just over 700 kilometres on the way from London to Istanbul, and now I'm here watching these river surfers because of a tip from the guy on the train. I'm looking forward to the next leg of the journey because this is when things should start to change quite quickly. Our next train takes us from here in Munich, in Western Europe, to Budapest, in Eastern Europe. Whoa.